Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and today I want to talk to you about neck pain. So, lots of varieties of neck pain, of course, but the most common complaints that I hear from either in-person clients coming to me for help or people online or in my Facebook group uh, is usually, you know, in the posterior neck. So somewhere in the cervical spine or back here in those occipitals or um, maybe even a little bit down in the shoulders where they're still kind of calling it neck pain in those traps. So I just want to classify that there are a couple different types here that I might be referring to. Uh, there could be something actually going on in your cervical spine. Uh, so somewhere in those little joints back there um, where you're actually feeling the pain more in that region. And then there's the soft tissue kind of neck pain where you're actually feeling it in the actual musculature uh, or maybe you know your neck is seizing up um, back there or spasming a little uh, or you're getting a pulling sensation. Sometimes people describe that to me from your rhomboids all the way up one side of your neck. And a lot of these kind of come from similar origins. Now, granted, everybody isn't the same and what works for you might not work for someone else. So when I'm talking about patterns, I'm usually generalizing a little bit and I always have to put that disclaimer in that we're all unique and what works for one person may not work for you. So um, I just wanna make sure that we're making the distinction between that posterior neck pain and any like anterior neck pain. Anterior neck pain is pretty uncommon. Usually what I'm gonna hear from people if they're talking about something in the front here is either pain in the clavicle or pain in their jaw or tension headaches or eye strain or eye pain. So I'm not covering anterior neck pain here, I'm mostly referring to something back here in the actual cervical spine or the muscula musculature back there. So. The number one rule that if you've been with me any length of time is gonna feel really redundant when I say it is that where the pain is usually is not the problem. It's not the root cause. It may be part of your solution in the case of neck pain, but it's not going to be the first thing you do. And so what I mean by that is all of these little muscles back here, your traps, um, you know, anything, the, the posterior scalenes, anything back there is usually not the problem. It's usually what's getting kind of beaten up or irritated either because it's getting overstretched uh, and kind of hanging off for dear life or underused and isn't strong enough to combat all the other muscles that you're maybe overusing in comparison. So when you're problem solving neck pain, the best thing for you to do actually is ignore all of this for now, or at least in the beginning. Um, so ignore those occipitals, ignore the posterior neck muscles, um, ignore your traps and your rhomboids. And instead, I want you to focus on your arms and your chest and maybe the front of your neck in that order. So I've actually worked on in-person clients of mine uh, with my method kinetics where I'm stepping on people to release fascia and had their extensor fascia right here be a huge contributor to their neck pain that they felt back here, believe it or not. I remember this one client who couldn't turn his head more than like this from side to side. Um, the pain he felt was back here uh, and we released his extensor fascia. It was super ropey and condensed and just adhesed. Um, we released it really well and he went boink. <laughs> So crazy things happen, um, but this isn't maybe gonna be the number one cause for most of you. It just could be for some of you. And so I wanted to make sure you knew that. So I would start with your forearm flexors and then maybe go to your extensors uh, and then check out your biceps, um, maybe the brachialis. And I'm kind of going in the order that I would go if I were working on you in my office. Uh, and then you wanna go to your chest and then I would go to the anterior neck. So your SEMs and your scalings. And I know I just threw a lot at you, 
um, and you don't have to do all of it. I just want you to know what a full kind of detective session might look like uh, with the front side of your body here. So you're really trying to hunt out the tightest tissue, the most restricted, right? The things that are really pulling on that posterior neck, causing it to be so irritated and unhappy. And for most of you, these days anyway, you might be in forward head posture, right? Because you're looking down all the time. Um, so I'm having to be super aware of that for myself because I look down a lot and this is the cause, um, at least fascially, right? The cause is looking down, but this gets super restricted um, and then it starts to pull your neck kind of like down and forward. Um, and then all of those back neck muscles are getting actually elongated, overstretched, and that's why they're unhappy. Um, and you can absolutely have overstretched fascia that's tight as a result. <laughs> um, sometimes our weak muscular areas are fascially tight because the fascia is contracting to protect you to hold your integrity together, <laughs> to hold your system together, basically. There's a term called tensegrity, so if you've been studying fascia, you're gonna know what that means, but it's just the idea of your um, soft tissue structure having integrity. So fascia can contract independent of muscle tissue to protect you, and it will do that in the case of something compromising your spine. But it can't win an unwinnable battle of doing this eight hours a day. So you wanna release all this front stuff. If I had to pick only one thing for you to do, it would probably be um, your biceps, believe it or not. And then if I had to do like two, it would be your biceps and your chest, and three would be biceps, chest, and anterior neck. And again, like I said, if you wanna go after everything, like I would with you in a session, then you would start with your forearm flexors, then your extensors, uh, then your biceps, your brachialis, your chest, and this stuff. Then if you really want to, you can go to the back side and it's kind of like comforting it, right? Like helping it go back to its original shape. Now that you've taken care of all the things that are pulling it, out of its original shape. So you gotta do this front stuff first. And I have techniques for every single one of those on this channel. Uh, you can use, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna link to them because there are so many. I have a whole bunch of different options for all of them. Um, that would be like a giant list of, of possible techniques you could use. Plus they're gonna use different tools. So I don't know what you have in your home right now and I want this to be super accessible for you. So, my recommendation is find the search function on this YouTube channel, or if you're watching this video on my blog, find the search function on my blog. Uh, it's easy to find on desktop, a little harder on mobile. If you're on my website, you have to kind of scroll all the way down, but it's there. Um, and then find it on YouTube because you can search neck pain and find every single technique that's gonna be relevant for you. Or you could search by body parts that I just named, forearm flexors, forearm uh, extensors, biceps, brachialis. Uh, we'll put those on screen so you know how to spell them, but and we'll put that in the description as well. Chest uh, and then anything in the scalene uh, or SEM region. So go see what I have there. See the tools that you would need for various ones and then pick the one that you have the tool for. Uh, and that just pick that to start. It doesn't matter um, if, you're, if you've been with me a long time, maybe you know you already have a favorite and you didn't know what you were supposed to do exactly for neck pain. So this is what I would have you do for neck pain. And if you're new here, um, just try to use whatever you have on hand. And if you are new to me and to fascia release, then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get yourself some kind of really good beginner foam roller um, and then some kind of ball. And it could be a tennis ball. I mean, you could go to like a tennis court and try to find a used one if you don't even have very many resources because um, a tennis ball works great for a lot of things. Uh, but you're going to need a few of those different tools for everything that I just mentioned. So go find them, go get your tools, and then share your thoughts in the comments below because I'd love to hear what you have to say after watching this video because a lot of the time it really surprises people that what hurts them isn't the problem, including neck pain. So how many of us go to a massage therapist and say, oh my God, my shoulders hurt, my neck hurts, and they massage your back and your shoulders and the back of your neck 
um, and you feel great, but then you maybe wake up feeling a little worse the next day. This has definitely happened to me, and it's because they paid too much attention to back there and not enough to this front stuff, and I've just learned the hard way that's not the, the great way to go about it. Um, and you really wanna find the root cause and get rid of that. So just keep in mind that pain relief is really different than getting some, you know, doing anything that just feels good or if you're working on optimization. So getting a massage because it feels good is different than trying to get a massage for pain relief. And same with fascia release. Uh, when you're doing your own fascia release at home, doing it for pain relief uh, is different than just doing it to optimize or doing it um, just to you know make your fascia healthier. So whenever you're working on a pain problem, just remember where the pain is usually is not the problem. So don't go there first, find something else, find that root cause. And in the case of neck pain, it's gonna be something in the front here. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information I just threw at you, but go try something in the front, even if it's just one technique, and then share your thoughts and your experience, and of course your success stories below. Uh, this video in the comment section. I can't wait to hear those from you. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe because I have new videos that go out every week, Monday and Wednesday. And if you are new here as well, I'd love for you to join my email community. We've got some free resources for you, uh, depending on when you actually land on this video. We've got some PDF guides. We've got a free kinetics technique, which is a partner uh, technique demo. Um, and we might have additional things, like I said, depending on when you land here. But I do email trainings I don't do anywhere else, so I'd love for you to join that. And you can also join my Facebook group. Uh, all of the data, everything you need to know is below this video in the description. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.